Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. DigitalAssetLife.com, a free site. Today is Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. Let's talk crypto, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the most powerful companies in the crypto sphere, right? They have multiple chains, including Binance.us here in the United States. Is Binance, right? They're very reliable. They're an industry leader. You'll notice certain features on Binance exchange sites that end up on other sites over time. Right, Binance, simply put, is one of the better crypto companies. Full disclosure, I own some Binance coin. I have farmed and staked on the uh, Binance platform, right? Excellent company. But a few days ago, the Monetary Authority of Singapore visited Binance and told them that they could be in breach of local laws. So Binance, an excellent company, when faced with these comments from one of the world's more vibrant financial centers, right? If you're someone who buys gold, uh, you know that Singapore is one of the jurisdictions where you want to consider storing your gold. Well, just understand, Singapore leaned on Binance a little bit. And Binance then announced that it was going to stop allowing users from Singapore to buy and trade crypto on their main platform. The thesis of this video is to point out the risks of centralization in the cryptoverse. Right? Bitcoin right now is the most decentralized cryptocurrency. There's not a central headquarters, folks. Right, you don't have a limited number of validators validating transactions. It's not proof of stake. I'm unclear. And like many of you, I've done my share of crypto transactions. But I'm unclear whether proof of stake is something consumers will want over proof of work in the long run, right? Because proof of work gives you a miner's ecosystem. It guarantees you decentralization. Nobody has enough power to start unilaterally making decisions that impact the entire ecosystem. Now, for some reason, right now, 2021, and again, it's October 2nd, people are prioritizing transaction speed, throughput, right? Those are the big things. Everyone wants to pretend that they're going to buy a cup of coffee with their cryptocurrency. And they need to know that that cryptocurrency can do that transaction quickly, cheaply. Right? And that they can then move on with the rest of their lives. Now let me just make a point. The advantage that Ethereum, not that Ethereum, 1.0 does anything cheaply, right? The idea that Ethereum and its competitors, and you have several, we'll name some of them here, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Kusama, the idea that Ethereum is going to flip over Bitcoin is going to become the dominant paradigm because of its transaction speed, completely ignores 
the many, many, many consumers who understand that one, Bitcoin is going to match the transaction speed. Bitcoin's costs are going to be low compared to Ethereum because of the Lightning Network. Right? What I want people to do is their own research. Nothing I say here should be construed as financial advice. But just understand, the transaction speed part of the equation may have already been solved. Right? Bitcoin is going to match Ethereum 2.0, in my opinion, in transaction speed. Bitcoin is going to match most of these Ethereum competitors in costs. Now what's not going to be matched? And it's very important. Is Bitcoin's level of decentralization by Ethereum, by Solana, by Avalanche, which actually prioritizes decentralization, by Polkadot, or by Kusama. Folks, that's not going to happen. So we're in a world right now where certain states, and let me applaud and single out one of them here in the United States, the state of Wyoming, a state that has a very crypto-friendly senator right now, a name we all should keep track of because she's ahead of her colleagues in terms of understanding cryptocurrency. Her name is Cynthia Loomis. Well, understand Wyoming has been handing out banking charters to banks that are crypto first, digital asset banks, Google the Kraken Bank, K-R-A-K-E-N. Right, by the way, yes, that's the same Kraken that's running one of the world's better exchanges. Google Avanti Bank. Right? They're also crypto first. They also have a state license from the state of Wyoming. Understand, as we talk about El Salvador accepting Bitcoin as legal tender, I just want people to understand that the infrastructure is already in the United States, right? States have recognized crypto and are actually issuing banking charters for digital asset technology. Now, Bitcoin, like the Rose Bowl in football, is the granddaddy of it all, right? Bitcoin started everything going. So it's a foregone conclusion that a Kraken, for example, with a state charter, is going to be able to trade Bitcoin. Even though Bitcoin has no centralized office and the Monetary Authority of Singapore can't walk into that office or pick up the phone and reach head honchos and then tell them, hey, you might be in breach of our local laws. Understand the way technology gets out there. Understand the nature of competition in financial markets. If using Bitcoin as legal tender helps attract capital to El Salvador's economy, right, at a time when the world is really saturated in debt, where countries like Venezuela right now have 75% of their people, according to reports, living in extreme poverty. If Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, which lowers transaction costs and sp speeds, right, uh, increases the speed, if El Salvador starts attracting a lot of capital, from people who want to use Bitcoin, want exposure to Bitcoin, might understand that Bitcoin is actually superior to fiat currency and even, 
ease of use. Well, let me just say, what will happen is the word will get out. People monitor financial markets. Right? Eventually, other countries are going to say, hey, we want the advantages of having a Bitcoin economy. Just by lowering transaction costs, remittance fees, we can increase the standard of living of our citizens. Right? Politics is a competitive marketplace, folks. Some challenger to a stagnant status quo who wants to be president of the country is going to say, hey, the people in El Salvador are doing quite well after this Bitcoin switch. Why haven't we made the switch? Well, I want people to, as they think about the recovering cryptocurrency market, as we head into a fall and winter where everything seems to be going up, right? We've gotten out of a slow, stagnant September. September is a tough month for stocks as well. And now, of course, we're getting greater regulatory clarity, right? The Biden administration has said, hey, we're concerned about stable coins, right? Didn't mention Bitcoin, didn't mention these other coins, right? We're concerned about these stable coins that are supposed to be tethered to the U.S. dollar, right? So you have a lot of investors now who are exhaling. We're saying, great, doesn't sound like the Biden administration is going to get tough with Bitcoin, right? You have SEC Chairman Gary Gensler, a name you need to know, a guy who used to teach blockchain at MIT. And he's talking about having nothing against a Bitcoin futures ETF. Right, folks, we're awfully close to getting cryptocurrency-based ETFs in the United States. So I know a lot of people are saying, okay, great. Cryptocurrency is maturing in a way I like. Right, crypto banks are now getting state charters in some jurisdictions. You look closely at the Senate and you'll notice a few people, not just Cynthia Loomis, who are pro-crypto. Right, Pat Tooby the senator from Pennsylvania. Now my advice to all of you who want to increase your crypto stake, who are hearing about these coins that have been on fire and who want a part of them, who are hearing about the DeFi world and who want to see if they can earn a rate of return that's greater than legacy finance can offer. Right? To every such person, all I want to do is to say the market right now is undervaluing the benefits of decentralization. Right? There's a chance that as crypto continues to mature, we actually prefer proof of work. Warren Buffett talks about wanting to invest in profitable endeavors that have what he calls a moat around them. Some competitive advantage that nobody else can match. That if others tried to match it, they would have to spend years and a lot of capital. Peter Thiel, and these are names I hope people Google, right? Good business is good business. Peter Thiel talks about how the goal is not to, you know, be able to compete with other players in the market. No, no, the real goal is to have no competition, to actually establish the market. Right? To see an opportunity that's so underserved that when you move into the space, you have no competition. 
Well, right now, at least not in the short term. Well, right now, folks, Bitcoin, simply put, has no competition in the decentralized space. Because it's the granddaddy of it all, it's grandfathered into all of these state-chartered crypto banks dealings. Right? People hear about Bitcoin and they say, whoa, that's so big. That started this whole thing. It's decentralized. We're going to have logistical problems trying to stop a decentralized group from doing anything. Because who do we sue? Also, we're already past the point where we question crypto. Now, countries are embracing crypto and they're naming. Bitcoin is legal tender. Let's go one step further too. The minute a country like El Salvador named Bitcoin as legal tender, that further weakened the ability of other countries to suddenly regulate it. Right? Understand, if I'm holding Bitcoin and China decides they're going to outlaw Bitcoin, well, guess what? I have countries out there where I know it's accepted it's legal tender. Right? I know I can get value for my Bitcoin in some jurisdictions. Others in the market know they can get value for Bitcoin in other jurisdictions. If I wanted to buy Bitcoin and China says, hey, we aren't allowing crypto sales. Well, guess what? I can go to the United States. I can go on Kraken, an outfit with a charter from the state of Wyoming, and I can do Bitcoin transactions. Good luck starting anything like Bitcoin now. Understand how big the moat is. Also, let me just say this, and it's a little bit of malinvestment. You mean to tell me that all of these newbies, all of these newer coins in crypto have attached themselves to proof of stake and not proof of work? Don't they think you want decentralization? Don't they realize that you don't want Solana being able to say, you know what, we have a problem. Let's shut down our blockchain for a few hours. Is that what you want? Would you want that from fiat currency? Full disclosure, I own some Solana. Just understand, my philosophy is, hey, go where the profits are. Short term, even though you know. Long term, it might not be fully sustainable. Well, let me just say, Bitcoin is fully sustainable. To those of you thinking about increasing your Bitcoin exposure, excuse me, your cryptocurrency exposure, for those of you thinking about starting a cryptocurrency exposure, I'm not against investing in Solana and these other coins, but do yourself a favor. Have a decent amount of your financial resources that you are investing in cryptocurrency in Bitcoin. Folks, there's Bitcoin and then there's everything else. I would argue that proof of work is superior to proof of stake. I know there's some environmentalist concerns. I can't envision a higher use of energy other than financial sovereignty. Right? To me, proof of work is superior to proof of stake. Bitcoin has decentralization nobody else is going to be able to match. Right? This is the Amazon in the room. More importantly, the moat keeps getting bigger 
and bigger, right? Whenever a new coin comes out and they start talking about validators, you already know you're dealing with much more centralization than Bitcoin has. Right? You already know that. You also know, too, that if a group calling themselves Shitosi Nakamoto 2.0 or whatever came out with some Bitcoin-type coin that had marginal improvements, you know they would get visited by groups like the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Folks, with Bitcoin, the horse is already out the barn. It's known, it's accepted, they don't even have to do an ad campaign, right? You know about Bitcoin, right? Finally, let me say, for those who believe a flippening is going to happen, that proof of stake Ethereum 2.0 that's being rolled out incrementally is suddenly going to become more popular than Bitcoin, right? Because of its smart contract capability. Well, let me just say, a very well-financed Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, the CEO of Square, right? Jack Dorsey is actively involved right now. We're trying to set up a Bitcoin decentralized exchange, right? Understand, Bitcoin is a hub of innovation because of its market share. Right? Biggest market share in all of crypto. And because it's viewed as stable enough, such that a country like El Salvador now has allowed it to be legal tender. You notice there are exactly no countries on the globe that have adopted Ethereum as their national currency. Right? People understand. You want a singular currency. That's Bitcoin. Right? You don't want a situation where your monetary system is based on software that already has many competitors and no moat. Right? Solana competes with Ethereum. Avalanche competes with Ethereum. Polkadot competes with Ethereum. Kusuma competes with Ethereum. Cosmos competes with Ethereum. Folks, simply put, in my opinion at least, nothing competes with Bitcoin. You have built-in scarcity. Right? Put differently, Solana has been down. Its blockchain has crashed more than Bitcoin, which has been running now for years. So, if I decided today, let me get into crypto. Okay. Maybe I fool around and, you know, I stick my toe in the water on some of the cryptocurrencies I've talked about here online in other videos. Right? Ave. All right. You know, um, Binance coin, BNB. Okay. Um, You know, stick my toe in the water on some other coins. But of course, a huge part of my stake, not a minor part, a huge part of my stake would be in Bitcoin because I would understand the hash rate, the decentralization. Folks, that's one hell of a moat that other coins simply won't be able to cross for several years. There are going to be more stories about coins with a central point of failure who get visits from SEC, uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, nation states who want to come in and tell the coin how they should be operating. Right? That's going to happen. Folks, that can't happen with Bitcoin. That's how I see it. It's too decentralized. Value decentralization. Make decentralization.
part of your crypto portfolio. Let me also close by giving a shout out to Dash. You know, for those of you concerned with speed of transaction who are flocking to these newer coins, I want you to consider one of the older coins that has a blazing speed of transaction and that has, has always had the same level of scarcity as Bitcoin. You heard me mention Venezuela the other day. Understand when you're thinking of investing in a coin and you value it as a means of exchange, ask yourself, is this coin used as a means of exchange in some economies in any substantial manner? Dash right now is keeping the Venezuelan economy afloat. Right? If you're thinking of investing in a coin and the issue of scarcity, the maximum supply of the coin is a bit hazy. Right? They're talking about burning coins, but they're also minting coins. Right? If it's hazy, if it's subject to some overview by some group of people, some developers, well intended or not, in my opinion, you're worse off than investing in a Bitcoin or a Dash where you already know how many coins will ever be mined. That's how I see it. Always consider Bitcoin when you're making a crypto investment. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. Go ahead and invest in other things. But you need to mentally make a note to yourself, okay, at least 25% of my crypto portfolio is going to be in Bitcoin. Why? Because it's decentralized. Because it has the name recognition. Because it has a moat that others can't compete with. Because its perceived shortcomings right now have already been solved by the Lightning Network. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.